Good morning, Trinity friends. How are you? It is Pastor Sally, and I'm so excited to be with each and every one of you guys today as we continue our Bible Circus series. Well, one of the things they like to do in the circus is play games. So today I have a ball and I have some cups. How many of you guys think I can take this ball and knock down each and every one of those cups? I'm pretty close to it. Let's see if I can do it. Not bad, right? I think I did pretty good. Well, today, kids, these Tower of Cups I knocked down today, well, it's going to remind us of a statue that was built a long time ago by a king named King Nebuchadnezzar. Can you guys say that? King Nebuchadnezzar. That's the king that had built a statue. He built it not only for himself, but he built it for others to bow down and worship. Hmm, that doesn't seem quite right, does it? Well, kids, let's begin our day. The first thing we got to do is actually recognize our fathers. It's Father's Day today. So happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Hope you guys have a great day. Kids, make sure you go run and give your dads a really, really, really big hug today. So you know how we also get started, and that is worth a word of prayer. So kids, today we're going to do, again, a prayer that's a little bit different. Today we're going to be um, saying a prayer that we are going to be asking God, we are going to be seeking God, and we're going to be knocking at God's door today. And that comes from a verse from Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 8. We're going to read it. So this is an instructional verse on how to pray. It says, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will open wide for everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks the door, will be opened. Well, that's a great promise. That's a great instruction for us on how to pray. Don't you guys think so? Well, I think we can go ahead today and pray and ask and, and, and seek God's face and knock at his door. So kids, as I'm praying, I want to let you know that at, at one point as we are praying today, I'm going to pause. And I want you guys to say a prayer and ask something that you want to ask God about. And so I'm going to give you that time during the prayer. And that's your time to talk with God. So let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are asking and we are seeking. And today, Lord, we are knocking at your door. We are seeking you because we want to ask you something. Lord, there are kids at home, and they are wanting to ask you for something. So, Lord, I'm going to pause for just a, a few seconds for them to talk with you and, and for them to ask you something. So, kids, at this point, go ahead and ask God. Lord, I don't know what the kids asked you for. And Lord, um, the kids don't know what I asked you for. But Lord, would you be with each and every one of our kids' hearts today? Lord, would you, um, would you find them in their place today? Lord, I just pray that you would be with each and every one of us. In your holy name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I love that. I love that prayer. Well, it is time to worship. So kids, that means we got to get up and we've got to get ready to sing and praise God. So Evelyn and Peyton's got a great song for us. Evelyn and Peyton, take it away. Sing it on. I lift my voice to praise you. I lift my voice to praise you. My concrete heart won't stop me My concrete heart won't stop me Oh. 
worship Through joy and pain we worship With heart and soul wide open With heart and soul wide open I am so glad that God has given us a home. Well, kids, it is time to check in with Bella and Joey. Doesn't it seem like they are always on some crazy adventure? They're doing some things outside, and and I just love to hear what they are always doing. So, Bella and Joey, what adventure did you guys do this week? Take it away. Hello, friends. How are you today? Bell and I are doing great. Why? Because it is Sunday. We get to be with all of you today. And it is Father's Day. Yes, it is. Joey and I made our dad a card and gave him a new type of work. Plus, we're making his favorite lunch today. Ribs and corn on the cob. It is a good day to say thanks, Dad, for being so awesome. Our dad is awesome. Hey, Joey, I've got a question for you. What happened to the cicadas? I have no idea. I heard them night after night. And then all of a sudden, I have not heard them. It is like they have gone silent. Maybe they've gone into the ground for the next 30 to 17 years, Joey. Not sure, but one thing for sure is that they'll be back. You're right about that. They will be back for sure. So, uh... So, Bella, how is your bike goal going? Pretty good. I'm up to two miles, Joey. Mom and I went out this past Saturday, and I was cruising down the road with the wind in my hair. Wow, two miles. That is great. We went into the forest preserve to ride, and we saw so many of God's creations in there. We saw a deer, Joey, and a squirrel, and so many birds. Is that why you wanted to make a birdhouse this week? Yes, Joey. What do you think? Well, robins are laying eggs right now, so birds do need homes. Home protects the birds from the predators that want to take their eggs. Who does that, Joey? Squirrels. Squirrels? Have you got, squirrels got to learn they can't eat eggs? What is your favorite bird? Is it a blue jay, a robin, or a hummingbird? Well, I love to hear the robins sing, but I do love to watch the hummingbirds. That's a hard question. The Bible teaches us to treat others as we would like to be treated. All of us are God's creation, from the birds, to the insects, to us humans, to the giraffes, and the elephants, and the snakes. Snakes eat me. I don't like snakes, but you're right, Joey. Bella, it seems that you've noticed that there were a lot of birds that you wanted them to have a home. What a caring heart you have. Empathy is a wonderful gift Jesus has given us to help us understand and help others. Empathy? I'm glad God gave me that gift. Friends, you can make a home for your birds in your backyard, too. All you need is a milk jug, string, and bird seed. Ask your mom and dad to cut a hole in the milk jug. You did a great job making your birdhouse. Today, well, thanks, Joey, but today I'm going to actually hang it in the tree. So, Mom, Mom, I want to hang the birdhouse in the tree. Can we do it now? Well, it looks like Bella flew the coop. Get it, kids? Haha, <laughs> I guess it is time for me to sign off as well. Hope you all get a chance to make our bird house for birds in your backyard. Bye for now.
by Joey and Bella. Well, I'm going to have to get a birdhouse for my birds in my backyard. I've got so many um, robins in my backyard. It's crazy. And they sing and they sing and they sing. But Joey, you're right. I haven't heard those cicadas either. I thought for sure I was going to get so many cicadas and they were going to be making that noise all night long, but I haven't heard them either. Well, Belle and Joey, thanks for, the, thanks for the great adventure. I love being with you guys each and every week. So are you guys ready for the would you rather statement? We've got Braylon here, and let's see what she's got today. Hi, Trinity families. It's Braylon. I have a would you rather question for you. Would you rather be on a TV show or would you rather meet a celebrity? I would rather be on, my t on a TV show because then I'd get more famous and probably meet that celebrity. Bye, Trinity families. I think you're right, Braylon. I think I'd rather be on a TV show too, but it would have to be a TV show that where I would laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. I want to make sure that I'm on a TV show that I can laugh. Great job, Braylon. Great job. Well, uh, kids, it is time to celebrate a birthday. And guess whose birthday it was this past week? Pastor Steve. It was Pastor Steve's birthday. I don't know how old he is, but it was his birthday, and uh, I hope he had a great day. Should we sing happy birthday to Pastor Steve? Can you guys join me at home? Let's sing real quick for him. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pastor Steve. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Steve. Oh, that was great. That was great. Well, kids, as we begin our lesson today in the big red and white tent, are you guys ready to dive into God's Word? Well, make sure you have your Bible and ready to dive in. But before we can buy, dive in, we've got to pray and invite God into our space. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for the birds that sing. Lord, we thank you for the deer that, that uh, roam uh, the fields, Lord. We thank you for the squirrels that climb up and down the trees, Lord. We thank, for, thank you even for the, the snakes, Lord. Um, God, we just uh, we pray, Lord, that you would be with us as we dive into your word today, Lord. God, I pray that you would um, open up our eyes and open up our ears to what you need us to hear. And Lord, uh, we thank you for all the many blessings in our life because of you. In your name we pray, amen, amen. All right, well, we've got Gabby, we've got Regina, we've got Caleb, we've got Joshua, and they've got our verse of the day for us. Three. Daniel 4, 3. His signs are great, his workers are mighty, his kingdom will last forever and will Daniel 4, 3. Nice job! I I'm going to get on a plane and fly wherever they are. I want to be on a beach too. Thank you, thank you so much. Well, kids, the kids got their, they got that verse in their heart today. We've got to put it in our heart today. So could you join me as we say today's verse together? It comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 3. His signs are great. His wonders are mighty. His kingdom will last forever. His rule will never end. Daniel 4.3. Let's say it one more time, kids. How many of you guys have it memorized already at home? Well, we're going to test it out on that, next, on that next slide, but let's say it one more time. His signs are great. His wonders are mighty. His kingdom will last forever. His rule will never end. Daniel 4.3. You got it? Well, let's see how good you're doing. I took out a couple more words. His signs are great. His wonders are, his kingdom will last, his will never end. How did you guys do? Okay, I'm going to fill in the blanks this time, but I wanted to see how you're doing it because you guys are hearing me and I'm kind of giving the answer. So let's do it one more time. His signs are great. His wonders are mighty. His kingdom will last forever. His rule will never end. Daniel 4.3. Great job. Great job, everybody. I love it. I love that you guys are able to get God's word in your heart each and every day. Well, kids, today's objective is, is that you're going to learn that God is with us no matter what we may be going through. 
even a coronavirus. And the bottom line, kids, is God is always by our side, no matter what. I'm going to say that one more time. You guys listening? God is always by our side, no matter what. Oh, I love that promise. That is a great promise for each and every one of you. So kids, as we begin our lesson today, we are talking about fire dancers. Have you guys ever heard of fire dancers? Well, fire dancers are individuals that are a part of the circus. Look at them. Aren't they magnificent? They are amazing. Fire dancers are one of the oldest and most impressive of all of the carnival's acts. And it's done by professionals. Make sure you guys know that. This is done by professionals. So we will leave this particular act to the professionals because fire can be very dangerous. Fire is somewhat mesmerizing, right? How many of you guys like to sit at a campfire? Sometimes you guys probably make s'mores with your moms and dads, and, and I'm sure that they're the ones that are kind of making them for you. But it is really cool to, to, to watch fire. Well, today's Bible count is not about fire dancing or making s'mores, but it is about a predicament that three young men found themselves in a blaze of fire. I'm talking a blaze of fire. But before we read God's account, I want to tell you guys some background information before we dive in. All right, the first thing is, it is the one of the most amazing, incredible accounts in God's Bible. There, uh, these men, they were true followers of God. They trusted God with their lives. They were captives in the kingdom of, of Babylon and trusted advisors to the Babylon king. Remember that, that really funny name? King Nebuchadnezzar. One day, the king unveiled a giant statue. And this statue was said to be nine feet tall and nine feet wide. King Nebuchadnezzar also ordered that all the people would bow down and worship this idol. And, and, um, and if they didn't, they would be put in to a blazing inferno. Mm, amazing. Well, kids, we are going to dive in. And so grab your adventure Bibles. We're going to turn to Daniel chapter 3, verses 7 through 29. So hold on tight. We've got some verses. That we've, got a, we've got a great account to read today. And you're going to turn to page 957. 957. So here we go. We are starting at chapter, chapter 3, verse 7. Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, the flute, the, the zither, the lyre, the harp, and all kinds of music, all of the nations and the peoples of every language fell down and worshipped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At this time, some astrologers, ast astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, May the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sounds of the horn, the flute, the, the, zith the zither, the lair, the harp, the pipe, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. And, the, and that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into the blazing furnace. Mm. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you. These are the three individuals. Your majesty, they neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar stumped Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before them. It is true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up. Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lair, the harp, the pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down at uh, uh, the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately, immediately into the blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Hmm, we'll see. 
We'll see, King Nebuchadnezzar. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then, ne then King Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. Hmm. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in the army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and thrown into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. Mm. So these men... They, the king's command was so urgent and the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire actually killed the soldiers that got too close to the furnace. Oh, they were actually killed. And these three men, firmly tied up, fell into the blazing furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement, asking his advisors, Weren't there three men that were tied up and thrown into the furnace? Hmm. They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I, ha I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. Oh, that is amazing, isn't it, you guys? Okay, we got to finish just a, a couple more. Um, and he said, they saw the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their head even singed. Now, you guys, this was a hot, hot fire. Their robes were not scorched. There was no smell of fire on them. Then, then King Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angels and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any God except their own God. Therefore, now this is the king talking, therefore I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be burned into piles of rubble. For no other God can save in this way. Amen. So King Nebuchadnezzar saw the mighty power of God in, in that moment, didn't he? He saw God with those three men in the blazing furnace. Amazing, truly amazing. So why were Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego thrown into that, that blaze? Because they were followers of God. And what is the first commandment? Do not worship any idols. Is gold, a, is a golden statue an idol? Well, yes, if you worship it. So are we supposed to do that? Absolutely not. It was the astrologers that informed the king that, Mesh, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow down and worship that gold statue of King Nebuchadnezzar. They stated that they pay no attention to you, meaning the king. They weren't going to listen to his decree. But of course, they, they are not going to pay any attention. They, the king, they did not want to listen, and they were not going to obey what he had laid out. Hmm. So, should Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego died before they even crossed over into the fury, fame, fury fame furnace? Absolutely. The soldiers did. 
They weren't even in the furnace, but they got too close to it and they died. You guys, that furnace was blazing hot. I mean, absolutely blazing hot. But the book of Daniel tells us that the fire was just, I I mean, we can't even imagine how hot it must have been. But I can only imagine, this is what I can't imagine, the look on King Nebuchadnezzar's face when he saw the flames not even touching the four men around it. Notice, King Nebuchadnezzar noticed that there were four in the fire. Not three that he had put in, but there had been one additional person. And who was that? That was God. That was God that he he rescued. He rescued his, 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 his men. God did that. There are many tricks at the circus that involves fire. But fire is very, very dangerous, kids. And not something that any of us should ever play with. Only highly trained professionals can even do these dangerous tricks. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't have any training with fire. They were just thrown into the fiery furnace. Thrown into it. They had simply decided ahead of time, before they even got there, that they were going to put their trust in God. They were going to put their trust in God. No matter what had happened, they were going to put their trust in God that they knew that their God would protect them. And even in the midst of a raging fire, they were going to put their whole trust in God and God alone. So who was God to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that day? God was their rescuer. That's right. God was their rescuer. He rescued them that day. God saved them. In verse 17, it says, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from, from your power, meaning the power that King Nebuchadnezzar thought he had. God is also our rescuer, kids. God is your rescuer. That's right. Always remember that. Keep trusting God and he will continue to save us. Kids, the verse that we are learning this week um, are actually the words from King Nebuchadnezzar after he witnessed that event that God had saved Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If we jump over to chapter 4 in God's Word, uh, verses 1 and 3, I'm going to read it to you. It says, um, let me just jump right over there for you. Um, He actually shares with them that verse. So Daniel chapter 4, verses 1 and 3. We're going to read that real quick. I want you guys to to hear King Nebuchadnezzar's words and what he said. It says, King Nebuchadnezzar, to the nations and the people of every language who live in all the earth, may you prosper greatly. It is my pleasure to tell you about the miraculous signs and wonders that the most high God has performed for me. You see, King Nebuchadnezzar got to witness it with his eyes. It is my pleasure, that's what he said. How great are his signs. How mighty is his wonders. His kingdom is an, is an eternal kingdom. <laughs> his dominion endures for, from generation to generation. That is King Nebuchadnezzar's words. After what he witnessed, how mighty and how strong and how powerful our God is. Well, kids, the bottom line is we can always rest assured that God is always by our side. He's always by our side, no matter what. So keep on trusting them, kids. So as we close today, I have Charlotte, and she is going to join us today and close us out with a benediction. So kids, stand up and receive today's benediction. Charlotte? Hey, Trinity kids, it's Charlotte. Please hold out your hands to receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen and amen, you are saved. 
Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you so much. Well, kids, as we close, don't forget parents. Head on over to the Trinity website, www.trinitynazarene.com, and click resources and download your Make It Stick sheet today. That will That is a great resource for you guys to continue your conversation on today's story. Well, kids, bye for now. Have a great week, and I'll see you back here next Sunday.